Lost on Lost Season 2, baby! Hell yeah! We've watched Seasons 1, 2, and 3 of Lost, and we've learned a lot. Did we? And we've learned to love Jack, Kate, Sawyer, Boone, and Claire. Did we? But now it's time for Seasons 4, 5, and 6. That's right, we're still going to talk about the mysteries and mythologies of the island. And obviously hot tropical hookups. But now we're going to talk about things like the freighter. The others. Charles Widmore. The lighthouse. Time travel. 9-11. Ronald Reagan. The Catholic Church. Titus. Gold Chief. Chains. The military industrial complex. The prison industrial complex. The void. The orb. And, and so, so much, much more. So strap on and strap down because if you thought last season was confusing, this is going to be so much worse. Or better if you like being lost on Lost. Strap on? You heard me. Welcome everybody to Lost on Lost. I'm Adam Busher and I'm joined as always by J.P. Russell. And this is the AMSR version of Lost on Lost. ASMR? A- AMSR. <laughs> a- a- awesome. A- 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 it's the one where your your ears give you a boner when you hear my voice <laughs> like this. I'm going to put you to sleep with an erection. <laughs> is, it, is it working? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, fi- I figured that we would do the ASMR version because we have uh, our guest who out of all of our guests so far has the sexiest voice <laughs> what <laughs> if if you mean by the physical representation of males on the chalkboard yeah welcome everybody to lost on lost um i'm adam that's jp jp's a clown and he's joined by his twin clown oh. brother freddy, freddy. <laughs> Hello. thank you and oh, freddy's man. voice is very sexy I appreciate. You gotta it, like. Man. You gotta get the plastic wrapper on, like you know, like Irish Spring soap or something like that, and unwrap it or something. The thing about that is, I actually hate that, so I didn't want to do it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> no, Puts me to sleep every night. Voices are fine, but yeah, that's just fine. like tapping the microphone. That's stop, not. Yeah, stop with like fifteen inch nails. Like stop scratching it. That doesn't. Me. That doesn't do anything for me. But like the voice <laughs> is good. So if you don't stop scratching it, it will never that's heal. Exactly it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what's up y'all nothing we're, we're you know we're 90 what it was 96 episodes in we had more technical difficulties again i'm on my third computer of the day trying to get a two mic recording solution and it's great like your fourth xlr cord <laughs> yeah I'm my fourth xlr cable oh my god hi freddie hi bud <laughs> how are you good living the dream so glad you could join us <laughs> i am very happy to join you again typically we ask our guests like yeah what have you been watching what have you been up to um but <laughs> you don't want to Know having having recently had your third child i assume you're just delirious yes yes <laughs> and it's the same you know disney movies or whatever is going on right now at the household it is uh scooby-doo meets kiss <laughs> and kiss is now my oldest favorite band and yeah. she walks around the house acting like kiss and she's going as halloween as kiss yeah as the whole band or just one of them i the cat <laughs> <laughs> Famous family friendly band Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it's in Scooby Doo, I guess. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, anything of note that you've been watching that's uh, stood out? Um, you watch a lot of stuff. I do, Lots and I'm kind of shit. like a weird hash, and we'll go back and watch like old stuff and and whatnot. Like Jack Ryan finished like a few years ago now, and I'm just taking my time through the last season of that. Yeah. Lives watching House of the Dragon, but uh, Game of Thrones kind of got ruined for me on the last season i just you know now i don't want prequels if i know what happens in the future kind of sure thing. I'm just sure not as interested yeah, so that's fair. it takes a lot to hold my attention although sure. i hear house of the dragon's pretty good no uh, it is and everything i've seen i just won't give it two shakes because i'm bitter and i rode the bitter bus to, yeah. to life every morning <laughs> rage and coffee that's it fueled by hatred perfect but not really it's mostly, it's mostly <laughs> fun. i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> Until you started watching this one episode of Lost. No, yep, this was a confuser. <laughs> but it's fine. I want to say, you know, this is officially my second episode of Lost I've ever watched. This is where you edit this in the is, applause. Yeah, this is this is the second. Wow. This is a hell of a second episode to come in And on. it is, but I, I honestly wanted to keep it kind of in the same light as the first because i don't know i think i'm a guest that is going in there as the virgin watcher if you will and sure i'm new to the plot every time and i find enjoyment with every bit of it whether it is cringe or actually good <laughs> so i have fewer notes this time and more of just from the heart oh <laughs> that seems a seems like a good a cue as any do you guys want to talk about it 
Hell yeah. All right, let's talk about The Lighthouse. Today we're talking about Lighthouse. Lighthouse is the fifth episode of the sixth season of Lost and the 108th episode overall. Uh, our centric character is a one Dr. Jackie Sheppy. Uh, <laughs> it originally aired on February 23rd, 2010. It was written by Carlton Cuse and Damon Lindelof. It was directed by Jack Bender. Lighthouse takes place on the sixth day after the crash of Ajira 316. C- a controlled controlled landing thank you controlled very much controlled landing <laughs> controlled emergency landing thank you very much frank j extra Lapidus. points for style <laughs> adam uh-huh. do you have a recap uh-huh. please god <laughs> give it to us no one likes the red Sox, jack <laughs> <laughs> On the island, Jin Su Kwan reconnects with resident island baddie Claire Littleton. And in addition to being island crazy, she's a little baby crazy. Elsewhere, Dr. Jack Shepard and Hugo Reyes boot up our favorite walking simulator, Island Crossing 2020. <laughs> <laughs> also, Kate appears and Miles disappears. Yeah. And in the past, but a different past from the one we're most familiar with, Jack loses his son after apparently already losing him in the divorce. <laughs> and where is the will, Jack? I don't know, Margo. <laughs> Lighthouse? More like Mirhouse, am I right? It's the Lighthouse here on Lost on Lost. Oh. <laughs> Very accurate. Lovely. Wonderful. Is that the first episode in a while you haven't made a I hardly know her joke? Uh, I mean, like, what do you mean by in a while? Because you did the last recap, and the one before that, I did a I did a helicopter, I hardly know her. So Right, that's what I mean. Like, in terms of your recap episodes, yeah. I feel like, yeah. So not a while. I It's the first one since the last one. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to say I w- I'd do it every time, but then you'd come to expect it. So I yeah. didn't do one on purpose. Because sure. you thought that I might do one, and then I didn't. Never let them know your next move. Exactly, Freddy. <laughs> we got a real short T2J here. It's either zero seconds or six seconds, depending on if you count a photograph of young Jack versus a well, photograph of old Jack. No, we're going to talk about the picture of young Jack for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so we open in flash sideways, and there's this panning shot of some photographs on a thing, and it's a picture of christian shepherd and two people we don't recognize and then like just next to it is a picture of jack shepherd and christian shepherd and whatever uh i'm sorry it the guy standing next to looks more like jordan peterson than christian Good shepherd call. <laughs> no it's like martin short dressed like jordan peterson <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's a pretty horribly de-aged prop photograph yeah, yes. and uh you know sometimes you just don't have time or money to make these things really good and who gives a fuck why would anybody the- be talking about this picture except us three yahoos <laughs> early, early days of photoshop uh but then yeah we we see uh doc you know getting home from surgery with the world's fastest wardrobe change yeah, yeah he's i'm like, filthy i'm just gonna put on a dress shirt it's an excuse to see matthew vox's mediocre physique <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he um, just home for a, a shower and a change. While he's re-robing, while he's putting his clothing back on, he takes a moment to like notice his, no way is that an appendix scar? Unless they took it out with a broken bottle? Like, uh, also, <laughs> I, was thinking, I like had my tool. appendix removed. They just cut my belly button. Right. Where did I get my appendix removed? Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like an appendix removal is generally done unless they can't laparoscopic laparoscopically laparoscopically yeah. there you go <laughs> they do it with like a little needle instead of like cutting you open to be fair that scar looks more like he was cooking like a pizza and he had no shirt on and the pan yeah, it looks touched like a his belly yeah yep, it happens to the best of us it does it I mean, does I got scars on me like Swayze and Roadhouse from a lot of Jack's pizzas yeah, at 3 a.m. Let's say I flopped a few Jacks in my lap on, on the old cut and had a couple scalders <laughs> Uh, the phone rings. It's his mother, Margot Shepard. They can't find Christian's body here in the flash sideways. They went through a similar process as they did in real the real world. His body got checked and then whatever, and they lost it. They might have checked it through Berlin. Man, whatever. Yeah, it what, came uh, damaged <laughs> like that, man. I don't know what you're talking about. What did you yeah. say your one note was about it? Was just Oh, I said you lost what? <laughs> 
That's the only thing I could think of. You lost whom? My dad. My father's coffin. Yeah. And so, like, Margo's all like, we can't find your father's body. How are we supposed to do any of this? And then Jack's like, do you remember when I got my appendix taken out? <laughs> That's exactly. I was thinking the same thing. Like, wow. Hey, um, do let's change append- lanes. Do you think my appendix is with dad? <laughs> <laughs> You were like seven or eight. You remember? And he's like, kind of. But then <sighs> that's kind of the end of that, it seems. I'm sure they come back to it. Yeah, but it's like, okay. Foreshadowing. Very obvious foreshadowing. Uh, it, it's 3.15, and he's got to go pick up David, his son, from after school. And he's late, so he's got to get his ass in gear. And he, he pulls up like- What a o- weird car like for the d- doctor to drive, by the way. Oh, dude, the Bronco? The Bronco? It's, awesome. it's awesome. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, uh, what you getting at, bud? There's, there's just a bunch of episodes where he's got to be like incognito driving around in like the most conspicuous vehicle. Yeah, I was about you to know. say incognito and like the most like ratted out cool hot right. rod Bronco it's, ever. That- it's just like when John Locke was trying to surveil his father in a cherry red VW bug. <laughs> This no, it's so obvious. No one will notice me. But yeah, he pulls up and parks like a real asshole, like a doctor does. Just like parks not in a parking spot, just parks like in front of the stairs. It's that cl- it's that classic kid's been forgot about. He's sitting on the stairs all alone, no supervision, no other friends. Just like even the people at the school were like, "Yeah, your dad sucks, huh?" Well, we gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Later, loser. And Jack's just like, I thought I had time to shower and change. And Dave's like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Let's just go. Dude, I've been sitting here for hours. I had to get into fancy clothes to go pick up my son from school. I couldn't have just worn the jeans and scrub top that I was previously wearing. Or even just like, you know, if you stopped at home, just put on a t-shirt. You change into a suit. Your mom calls you. It's a cell phone. Talk to her while you're heading to the car. Like, right. Also, like, don't doctors like always keep clothes at the hospital? Yes. And wear watches. Shower there and get ready. Right. (laughs) (laughs) They wear watches and have like beepers. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Whatever. Jack's a bad dad. Or might might be a bad dad. Whatever. Pseudo deadbeat. Cut to the island. This is the the temple. We're a little familiar with the location. This location yeah, here. Yeah, uh, right, Freddy, just recently. Right, Freddy, you know all yeah, about this place. I had no idea, but I enjoyed it. Gave me Stargate Aztec vibes. Uh, let's say I I always I immediately went to Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh no, that's good. I get some Olmec vibes from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hiroyuki Sonata giving me that Temple Keeper vibe. Yeah. Also love seeing him. Yeah. Oh, Ageless yeah. Wonder. Yeah. Playing a character named Dogen. Which is, you know, whatever. Yeah. Don't know where that name came from. Or... It was just some some writer that was on, on oh. some mushrooms. Well, I wrote Dogecoin. Sorry. Dogecoin. It might as well be that. <laughs> it, that makes as much sense as Dogen. <laughs> He, he speaks, sits down talking. Yeah, he's, he uh, he's, he goes over and talks to Jack. He to ask him, he say, "Oh, your friends Ford, at, Ford and Austin and Quan are not coming back." And he's like, "Man, probably not." Yeah, probably yeah, not. I love the mm-hmm. casual. I don't know the I don't know the relevance to that, but it was a very casual. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Well, thanks for your honesty. This is actually being, the pilot yeah. to Shogun. I appreciate yeah. your honesty. I appreciate your honesty too. Well, I'm glad we're all being real <laughs> honest all over here. Like, I fucking, still let's... fucking hate you. I still fucking hate you. <laughs> yeah. Like, as soon as you guys are done jerking each other off about your honesty, can we move forward? Yeah. <laughs> Cut to the best part of the episode. <laughs> yeah. At the temple. With Miles and Hugo. God, I love Miles. They made lawn tic-tac-toe out of like a series of leaves and vines and things. It's pretty sweet. Dude, you think the other folks at the temple were like, fuck, why didn't we think of that? Why didn't we yeah, do that? God, we could have been, <laughs> we've been burning our days trying to survive when we could have been playing tic-tac-toe. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they, no, they've been playing tic tac toe, but they've been chiseling it into the walls of the temple, and so they're only on like game two or three. Like, <laughs> see, but this is this is another one of those things where I feel like you're actively trying to survive. So if I'm that group of people, I'm going to turn and look at them, and I'd go, "Are you seriously playing tic tac toe right now? Like, yeah. Do you know where we are? I have an M1 Garand. Right. Where did this come from, by the way? Yeah, they're trying to field dress a boar over there, and they're like, <laughs> I can use it with a sharp rock, like. <laughs> How's your tic-tac-toe games going, bud? It's fine. I'm sure you're going to eat this later, though. No, I didn't yeah. need any fucking help. <laughs> yeah. Tie it again. Shocker. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just keep laying the same things down in the same places. I, I don't know what happened. Hurley's like, hey, you hungry? Uh, you know, and they, they're like, yeah, let's let's figure out some food, you know, whatever. And then they, they cut to, like, the interior of the temple where Strange. the water was, like, bubbling bubbling up. And I was like, that is the world's largest deep fryer. They got a that's lot of fries actually, up in that That's bitch. exactly what I was thinking, too. I was like, it looked like an acid bath deep fryer. And I'm yeah. like, why is that guy so sad looking that's, at the vortex of indifference? Like, <laughs> my nuggies aren't floating. I'm going to throw, <laughs> throw in some taquitos. They sunk to the bottom. We're going to change this oil. It smells like last week's fish fry. 
My my chicken nuggets smell like fish. Have you changed this oil? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Hugo's like, hey, bro, where's the kitchen at? The the dude, he's, he's like, oh, it's just over there. Uh, Hugo. I'm certainly not anybody you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not certainly anyone you know and also really out of focus, Brock. Brock. Yeah, wow. Sleep at the switch again. Yeah, it's Jacob. Oh, Lord. Lordy Lou. Dead. Dead ass Jacob. He's there and he's like, here's the kitchen. But actually, you don't have time to go to the kitchen. I need you to help me get somebody to the island. And so get a pen. I have yeah, instructions so I, for yeah, you. I have time. You have time to write an absolute essay on your forearm. <laughs> Instead of a, me just telling you and trusting you to remember. The yeah. only two spots I sweat on my body are my yeah. head and my forearms. <laughs> forearms. That shit would have been gone. I had to write that shit on my <laughs> leg or something. Now he's improvising a new adventure into the forest. Saying, <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. All my instructions are gone. Yeah. yeah. And then so like Hugo goes, goes back out to the courtyard and he asks the folks for a pen and they're like <laughs> trying to start a fire with like three sticks and a <laughs> fucking ripped up coconut. A pen? For real? You fuck face. <laughs> Mike found a pen in the jungle th- six years ago. We killed him for it. Richard has dysentery. Are you asking me for a pen right now? <laughs> oh, you have any God. batteries? My Sega Genesis is dead. Yeah, my game, <laughs> my, gear, my, my game gear's dead. My game gear's dead. <laughs> Uh, the lost card flies past, and we cut back into Flash sideways. Freddie, this so this is our second Flash sideways of the episode. So, like, how much did you were you vibing with this this style of storytelling in which um, it's very similar to the Flash back, which you experienced yeah. back with the uh, you know the the previous episode you were yeah on, with but... Locke and, and his dad and the yeah. ridiculous so like, uh... transplant. No, you know I get it; it's part of the storytelling. But at some point, I'm like, can you just let's just stick to the let's stick to the jungle, let's stick to the Indiana Jones. <laughs> Ask Uncharted Adventure and not the, uh, hey, listen, you're a hyper-privileged kid at a private school with an actual not bad life and you're kind of a savant. You should be pretty grateful, but hey, I'm going to lock you in this room and uh, the Red Sox are on, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go over to your grandmother's house, piece of shit. You want to come? Uh, gra- grandma does smell like <laughs> cheap brandy, though, which is... <sighs> I was about to say that. Margot just seemed like that, Grandma. <laughs> Depending on who you are, that's like a good memory for you, or maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Margot, you go over to Margot's house, and all there is is just vodka and wine. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you want something to eat, or you didn't bring anything? Jack is trying to bond with David. He's, like, talking to him. He's just like, hey, you know, like, yeah, whatever. Like, a guy hooked up the cable, and he's like, oh, you read Alice in Wonderland? Oh, I read this to you as a kid, or blah, blah, blah. It's 100% a hotel room, too. Totally. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it looks is a like Total setup of that. Yeah. This is my condo. I'm a doctor. Does your mom ever ask about me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she have any guys come over to yeah. call my uncle or Does anything? Does your mom have any new friends? <laughs> she keeping that thing tight? <laughs> she <Anyways>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it becomes apparent that Jack only has visitation of David once a month, Whew. which is to which David not is a very, lot. very, but he's very for like, him to be like it. a like a renowned surgeon too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's a renowned surgeon, and they're like, no, you are so irresponsible. You only get to see this kid once a month, right? Here's the the court case. Yeah, Your Honor, he's a brilliant surgeon, but he's a huge piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. David's very standoffish. The whole thing's very tense. A cut back to the temple. Saeed's here, and he's not <laughs> still Saeed. alive. Not still alive. <laughs> Newly alive. Newly oh, alive. well, no, I mean, like, he oh. didn't get poisoned. Right, yeah, yeah, because Jack almost poisoned himself. <laughs> Saeed's like, everybody's <laughs> staring poisoned. at me. And Jack tells him the story. He's like, well, they wanted me to poison you because they think you're sick. And I said no, <laughs> and now you're still alive and sick, and everybody's really weirded out by you. <laughs> Which, also, if they got a problem with Saeed being alive, you think one of the guys could just, like, Shoot him. Unalive him. Right, why yeah. did it have to be poison? Like, just clip him. Like- yeah, it's like, this seems like a pretty uh, weird existential thing to have to poison someone when you're like, I'm trapped in a remote island and it's literally Lord of the Flies. Right, yeah. Throw right. him in the big deep fryer. Can I make it? <laughs> big deep fryer. Good eating for everybody. Everyone <laughs> wins. The other, the other guys in the courtyard were like, well, we planned to have him die of boredom, but then Miles and Hugo <laughs> made tic-tac-toes. <laughs> <laughs> And now we're fucked. They're immortal. <laughs> Can I just say one thing that I noticed? The soundtrack on here is just giving me absolute Hercules and Xena vibes. Oh. <laughs> it's Ooh. like really ominous when it, and like a carnival ominous, and then it has like these really adventuring kind of footpath trotting things. Yeah. You you never know, but I'm just like, it, it almost seemed like, hey, what do we have free? Oh, I'm just going to put this in here. That works. It doesn't uh, I'm pretty sure that Michael Giacchino music. did all the music for the thing. So, like, but it, this is season six. You got to think that at this point, easy to, like, phone it in. 
Yeah, he's just like, mail me my fucking check. Please. Or you know what this is? This is like, these are all of the tracks that he did for like the first or second season yeah. that didn't make the cut. And he's yeah. like, this is what I got left. These are all my C roll. Yeah. Uh, Saeed asks, like, well, how do they know? And they're like, Jack's like, it happened to somebody else. Somebody. Then they, they, then whatever. And so then we cut to the somebody else somewhere in the jungle. Claire, Claire frees Jin from the the from the bear trap. Yeah, why do they have to do Quan dirty like that? I'm like, they straight up mangled my dude. Uh, she was just sitting. how's he gonna drift? <laughs> How is he ever gonna drift again? She's just been setting traps in the woods, so she's she's For a little what? jungle crazy. What is on this island? Boar, Sam Squanch, <laughs> Sam Squanch, Sam Squanch, um, <laughs> Ted Koppel, um, Ted Koppel, oh, Ethan. Ted. Yeah, oh, yeah, Ethan. Ethan is unstoppable. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it turns out she's been here for three years. Yeah, damn, I mostly a lot by herself. <laughs> well, she's got a friend. Yeah, that yeah, we she got learned a about later. And her dad. Small friend. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's a little, she's a little on the edge. She's a little out there. Uh, I come back over to the temple. Hugo follows Jacob's directions, and he gets interrupted by Dogen. Yeah, Dogen's like, "You can't be here. What are you doing?" And he goes, "Like, I'm into like <laughs> history and stuff, stuff, I like and hieroglyphics stuff. and stuff, dude." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> freaking into temples right now yeah dogan's like you can't be here go back to the courtyard and then over dogan's shoulder jacob appears and he's like just tell him you're a candidate and you can do whatever you want so i have no context to this but i'm now going to say it all the time i'm just gonna if my wife tells me to do something i'm gonna look at her and say i'm a candidate <laughs> i'm a candidate she'll say what and i'll be like you go into the front of the temple <laughs> <laughs> you go outside you're you're a candidate for a lobotomy uh, yes yes <laughs> Yes, I am. Uh, but no, it's actually like it's great because Hurley, like her, you know, we've we've seen Hurley be fumbly before before, and we've also seen him like come into his own and learn how to like wheel and deal on the island. Now he's he's like, I got Jacob on my side. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm Jacob just calls go- him by his first name too. That's how you know it's serious. Yeah, and he's like, I'm a candidate. Fuck off. And I, I was like, Yeah. Yeah. I still don't know what a candidate is. Neither do we. That's cool. Oh, That's cool. We do? We, yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we do know. I already knew. JP has been told and it's probably forgotten, but also <laughs> it's like sort of remembers. It's the candidate to, to replace Jacob. To replace Jacob as protector of the island, correct? Yeah. yeah. Ah, interesting. I feel like Hurley is a human capybara. Ooh, if yeah. you guys <laughs> notice that, he's just unbothered 24-7. I'm like, yeah. this dude is so fucking casual. Yeah. I'm like, he has no enemies from what I've seen. Oh. Like, he literally just asks you, hey, man, you looking for some food? Yeah. Like, yeah, man, let's go. Let's go hit the bowl and go. Like, How do you have weed on the island, Hurley? Don't ask, bro. I just have a good connection. It's cool. Let's just go get ripped and have some tacos. You have tacos on the island, Hurley? Of course I do, man. I'm Hurley. I don't know why I gave him that voice, by the way. It doesn't sound anything like that. The next thing that happens is after her, uh, Hugo says he's candidate, Dogen mutters in Japanese and like walks away. Yeah. Yeah. Ask him, what did he say? And you don't yeah. want to know. I wonder, and, uh, has anyone translated it? Well, and the, in Lostpedia, it is translated. Uh, I couldn't find it. I read it already. I can't find it again. But, oh, um, dang. But the gist of it is, he's like, you're lucky you're a candidate. If you weren't a candidate, I'd cut your head off. <laughs> oh, damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so candidate is some. So here at the temple, apparently, being a candidate gives you some special status. And, well, and uh, they know what the candidates are. And they know like, what the candidates are. That's pretty wild. The, the candidates don't even know what, what the yeah, candidates yeah. are. <laughs> Hurley just knows it's a free pass for yeah. something. He's like, I could explore the temple now. Yeah. yeah. I would use it as a chat-up line. I'd go up to all the girls and be like, hey, so I'm a candidate. Like, And they'd be like, get away if from you don't, me. If you, don't know, if you don't know, you can't afford it. The wintry freshness of mace. <laughs> yeah. A candidate for a restraining order. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> candidate to move to a temple 500 feet from here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is my temple now, world's biggest deep fryer. This is my temple. <laughs> I'm the candidate, motherfucker. I'm the candidate now. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the candidate now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, so Hurley goes outside and he's trying to like play cool Jack. He's like, listen, I'm going to tie my shoe. And 10 seconds later, you're going to follow me like they're fucking Cold War spies or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Jack's like, what? What? Just what? what? He's like, Just... We're going to get out of here. Like, no, I'm not getting out of here. And what does he say? He says, he, he just, says, Jacob said to tell you. Yeah, you you've would know what, what it means. It, that you, you've you got what it takes. Yeah, that, you would spin, know what it means. Yeah, he stands up. He's like, what? And he's like, you said you know what I mean. Just like, come on. Can, can we just say that super generic line? Like, you've got what it takes. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, what, what it is takes. that? He said you know what it means. And he's like, well, it doesn't mean it. I have what it takes because I, that's nothing special <laughs> at all. How did he know I drank a Snapple once and read the cat? <laughs> exactly. That would have been far more relevant. It's like, <laughs> tell me. You wore a size 7 shoe up until you were 12. 12. <laughs> 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 just... <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Neat. Okay, I'm coming with you into the woods. But again, who wouldn't follow Hurley? He is a human yeah. capybara. It's like, all right, yeah. he's like non-lethal. Yeah. Commercial, and then we cut back to Claire's house. Uh, the house? <laughs> yeah. Claire's horror shack. She's She's got olives. She does have the olives. Uh, she also has a fake baby. Uh. They have an <laughs> animal skull. What was the what's the and something for eyes? I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, what's the name of the the little statue in Major League? Uh, a Jobu. Jo- Jobu. <laughs> She's got a little Jobu. It kind of is a Jobu meets a jackalope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fast as fast can be, I'll never catch me. It was um pretty horrifying. Yeah. Like, Quan, Quan senses that immediately and is yeah. like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Because yeah. yeah. like, <laughs> it's just like, oh, fuck, no. Because, like, <laughs> if that was just sitting on a table or, like, on the ground, that hey, Claire, would be, like, it'd be disconcerting, but not, like, horrifying. But, um, she's storing it in a crib. <laughs> yeah, it's in a bassinet <laughs> with a blankie on it, like, yeah, she's fine. tried to breastfeed this thing. <laughs> <laughs> She swaddles it and she sleeps with it at night. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Jin's like, uh, I'm going to use this boat hour as a crutch and get away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he, he doesn't have time. Claire returns with uh, not dead Justin. Hey, we love to see that he's alive. Yeah. So she t- she's she says, I'm going to question Justin. I'm looking for Aaron. They have my baby and I'm going to get my baby back from them and I'm going to kill everybody that I need to in order to do it. For someone who's lost her mind, she's making a pretty good plan. She is. She's <laughs> objective oriented. Yeah. Uh, and Jin's like, how long have you been here by yourself? And she's like, oh. I'm not by myself. Oh, no. I've been here three years. <laughs> I've got my Thank father you. and my friend. And my baby. And the baby. <laughs> and the Justin's one of my neighbors. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> We're having a bit of a dispute right now. He's my friend in my interior designer. Yeah. It sleeps in a little basin that I found on the beach. <sighs> yeah. So she's like, I'm going to go get the first aid kit because I don't keep it inside because why would I? Yeah. It's right. Good to let it rust to the elements. Yeah. Yeah. And Justin tries to convince Jin to bail. He's like, she's. But, well, I, love, fucking but nuts. I love because yeah. Jin is seriously giving it consideration. He's like, yeah, I saw the baby. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I know. I know. She's she's crazy. I don't think she wants to kill me, though. She, she definitely say, wants she to was, kill you. She was cool with me, bro. You're on your own on this one. Yep. But but also, like, correct me if I'm wrong here, like, the last time Claire probably saw Jin, he did not speak English. <laughs> yeah, she he was, yeah, three years ago was prior to everything. Like, that was the, the end of season four. Yeah. And so that would have been... They missed a great opportunity to bring it up. She would have been like, you're talking so Yeah, good. she's like, speaking. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Well, she's, she's got Sorry. some trees talking to her. Yeah. She's, either that or she thinks that she speaks Korean now. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, <laughs> I know. She's like, I only speak to the trees now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we cut over to Hugo and Jack. They have left the temple. They are heading to wherever Jacob wants Hugo to go. Yeah. Hoping it's a picnic. Yeah. And they run into Kate. Neat. Cool. Kate. Jack's like, where's Sawyer and Jin? And she's like, Jin went back to the temple and Sawyer, Sawyer's on his own. <laughs> he's, he's no longer with us. Because we broke up, probably. He's over at the, the Pouton Pond. Yeah, he left me in the river. I've, <laughs> I've been sitting here ever since, Jack. I like how she's just holding the piece in her hand, too. Like, not expecting anyone, but she's like, I got this gat and I'm going to be yeah. ready all I the time. I almost shot you. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, Kate talks with her hands and always has a gun in her hands. It's terrible. But can you stop? Pony? Yeah. Can you stop? Stop. <laughs> Jack's like, come with us. We're going over to here. And he was like, she's not invited. And Kate's like, I don't actually want to go anyway. Uh, I'm doing my own thing. I got to go find Claire. So do your fucking boys trip. I don't give a shit. Like, your, yeah, Jack, your, you thing is not your, your thing is not my thing. My thing is my thing. Fuck wow. off. <laughs> That's what I'm My thing yeah. is my zesty, long, curly brown hair. Now I'm so over you, Jack. Yeah. And this just hammers home a point that hypothetically, I think the chronological audience knows is that they all came back to the island for their own reasons and they're all and and their their goals don't necessarily follow the same path. Uh cut to flash sideways. Um Jack and Margot are looking for Christian's will. Um well, it's right there on the bookshelf. Hey, um <laughs> Adam. Yeah. Just real quick, um, going back to the the last scene when Jack with his with his son, um, he was like, "I gotta go help your grandma. I'll be back in an hour." Yeah. In L.A. traffic, is he getting anywhere in an hour? I mean, if she lived next door. I was about to say, is she in the same neighborhood? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> two I, hour trip. I, I got to think they look, probably live in a, a relatively similar neighborhood. But like, I don't know. I, it, it, all right. So like, okay. So if Jack live, Jack obviously lives in the hills somewhere because later in this thing, we can, see, we can see out of his window, the cityscape. So he li- he's got to live in the hills somewhere. Margot's house, his childhood home seems like upscale suburban type thing so like if he's in the hills and maybe she lives in the brentwood area around ucla or something like that that could play but it's also you see the background behind his childhood home margo's current home there is a hill and again it's likely a a hawaiian local location or whatever they're trying their best to make it so that could be i mean that could be up north that could be santa clarita that could be new hall that could be you know so if i mean if he's going from the hills to santa clarita in the middle of the afternoon like after school's over, heading north. No, he'll be halfway to Margot's house in an hour. Yeah, but so I mean, she's got to. They got to live like in the same neighborhood. Otherwise, no. He's say got, it's like three doors down. Yeah. It just took a long time. Yeah. It, it's it's one of those where it's like it's again it's the you know disappointment as as a result of expectation. He's like, oh son, I'll be back with a pizza in an hour. It would take me twenty minutes just to go get a pizza. Right. And then, yeah, that's not even yeah, we're not even yeah, talking and about And then I ate the pizza on the way home. I'm sorry, yeah. it was a terrible traffic. Right. Yeah. Like you're gonna go drive to somebody else's house, find the will, grab a pizza and be back in an hour. That's pretty lofty. Right. You're setting yourself up for failure, Doc. Yeah. And uh, she probably was like, I need you to help me look for the thing. So it's not like he's going to go over there and pick it up. He's going to go over there and then help yep. her look, which is going to take extra Way time. Way more than an hour. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most unrealistic timeline ever. It's under all the Johnny Walker bottles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say he lives in the hills. He can go north, maybe up to like the Mulholland section to go over the hill that way. Then he got, has to go through the valley. Like he takes a canyon road to Mulholland, Mulholland down, uh, to the four um, to the four hundred five. Gets up to Santa Clarita. This is assuming she lives in Santa. This Clarita. is me asking yeah. for directions at the he's, gas station. He's gonna be up in Santa Clarita at her place in maybe an hour and fifteen or so. Wait, go back. Maybe to, uh, Mulholland. maybe say forty five to f- to look for the will. Coming south, that actually won't be that bad because this, at that point rush hour will probably be over and he's heading against traffic so coming coming back home will probably be 25 30 minutes this is me asking for directions at the gas station hey you got any of the boner pills with a rhino on them <laughs> anyways so, this yeah. has been another edition of la traffic with adam busher this segment is for patty and patty only <laughs> Okay, so the, the I only wrote here. That, this is very succinct. This the scene is longer than my notes. They look for the will. They speak about generational trauma, fathers and sons, and fear. The will turns up. Did your father ever mention a Claire Littleton? Yep, that's it. Next scene. It's very, very important in context. Okay. <laughs> in not context, the scene's just too long. Yeah, yeah, anyways, I agree. Claire's house. She, uh, Claire patches Jin up. She's. Just gives him some stitches. She's like, at least you don't have to stitch yourself up. Yeah. I'm going to sharpen this stick on my axe, or am I sharpening the axe with this stick? <laughs> Either yeah. way. It's yeah. rusty and it's going to hurt. Uh, she says that Christian and her friend are the ones who told her that the others, the new others, took Aaron herself. Yeah. So that's why she's hunting people, specifically. I feel others. like Juan's conversation with her as well. I take it to heart because I feel like that's how people have conversations with me. <laughs> I'm Claire, aren't I, JP? <laughs> Where you're looking, you're like, yeah, we're friends, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I, your your baby's fine, I swear. Now put the axe away. <laughs> the the funny thing, I don't know if it's funny. Um, the interesting <laughs> thing about this whole thing is that, like, yeah, prior to like three years ago, Jin and Claire were they were all like it was all good, and yeah, so like Jin is sitting bounds. here like. This only gets more terrifying by the second. Yeah. yeah. Like, am I gonna get? Am I gonna get Kathy Bates? Am I gonna get miseried with yeah. that axe when she comes in? Like, uh. I, I like. I haven't thought about you in three years, and now I'm reintroduced to you three years later, and you are th- the polar opposite of everything I knew about you. Yes. Right. Now you have a creepy baby idol, and you're a cannibal, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> you hunt humans for sport? <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty cool. You can't just yeah. keep saying, they took my baby and then killed them. It doesn't work after the 30th time, Claire. Uh, there's a commercial. We cut uh, back to the jungle. Hugo and Jack arrive at the caves. They step on an uh, inhaler, and they're like, what's up with that? It's like, it's Shannon's inhaler. <laughs> According to Lostpedia, they threw this in there because apparently at a con, somebody was like, what's up with the inhaler? And they were like, that's what? not important. And that's not important enough to answer. And then they were like, fuck it, we're throwing it in here. <laughs> <laughs> when was there an inhaler? Oh, the yeah, when Shannon was like hyperventilating or yeah, something. Yeah, she has asthma. And like part one of the things is like they try to like find her inhaler and the like son gives her like 
Vicks Vapo Rub, but made out of island juice. And yeah. Jack's like, why didn't I think of that? I'm a doctor. Me and my man brain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Shannon had asthma. Uh, rest in peace, Shannon. We hardly They just you. put this in to wrap up the storyline of what happened they- to the inhaler. No, because they weren't going to do anything with the inhaler. Some nerd asked about they it. They just threw it in there for the fan. And they were like, you know what? We weren't going to do this, but now we're doing it just to say, No, that's a, sh- that's a shut up nerd. <laughs> yeah, shut up it's nerd. Exactly. still so dumb. Of all the plot lines that don't get resolved in this show, at least we got closure on the fucking inhaler. <laughs> like, yep. Can I also um, say for a tropical climate, I mean, I sweat when I make the bed. Sure. <laughs> Like, I'm sweaty. I'm like, I'm gassed. And, like, these dudes are, like, hucking through the tropical rainforest, and they have minor sweat. Yeah. Are they so mm-hmm. acclimated to it? Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. It's just a small thing. They, they've got a good bit here where Hurley's like, what if when we were time traveling, we went back in time to the dinosaur times, and these skeletons <laughs> are us? And I was waiting for Jack to be like, those skeletons can't be us, because one of them's a lady. Uh, I checked the pelvis. <laughs> Look at the oh. pelvis. You can tell that was a lady because of the pelvis. <laughs> so obviously, Dr. Jack is pretty pretentious. It's, yeah. It's also interesting when they flash back to across the sea that they chose to do the flashback of when they do the flashback of the corpses, they go back to the season one yeah. episode rather than this one, which would have been in the audience's mind more recently. Yeah. But I, I feel like this had to be like, hey, re- remember the corpses? Like, yeah. we're going to we're going to play it off in a few episodes from now. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's why they did it. They're like. We're Shout out to the cave because, corpses. Yeah, in a few episodes, we're doing a we're doing a skeleton cave episode. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this also gives Jack an opportunity to finally, finally, finally confess, finally tell somebody that the entire reason that they found water in the first place is because he was chasing a literal ghost. He never told anybody at the time because whatever bunch of weird shit was happening and. For what, like, he would have been taken, I think, at face, or, like, he would have been taken seriously at the time, and he was worried that he wouldn't be for whatever reason. So he never told anybody, but now he's like, yeah, the ghost of my father brought me here. That's how we found water. But then, like, are we to understand that they lived in the caves and they never cleaned up the coffin or the corpses? That's weird. Maybe Apparently. it's just aesthetic. I don't know. I would that, I would have burned that coffin. That coffin would have been part of the signal fire 15 seconds after I found it. Right. Um, or you build something out of it. I don't know. Yeah. The bodies would have been kindling. What? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Beef jerky. I don't, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put them in the big deep fryer. Did you just eat that mummy? I sure did. <laughs> It was deep fried in the temple. Deep fried mummy. Name yep. of the episode. Oh, yep. God. <laughs> band, new band name. Called it. <laughs> <laughs> this one's teriyaki style. <laughs> uh, very, very teriyaki. Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure why this scene's here. We cut, to, we cut to a flash sideways. Jack brings home a pizza and three cans of soda. <laughs> so they have to fight over the last one? Or? Yeah. David isn't home. He's not. There's not in his room. He's not at the thing. So Jack sits down and has a beer, um, yeah. and then and then calls his son it's, and be like, <laughs> "My teenage son who shouldn't be out alone." Yeah, I I'm worried about you. I'm gonna go to your mom's house and see if she's there. I'm gonna break and enter a little, um, <laughs> little bean, a little Julie bacon mom. and eggs. Uh, she's not home. She's probably out with your her new boyfriend, Clark. <laughs> yeah, how's Clark? <laughs> And so he goes to Sarah's house, the keys under the rabbit, he goes inside, uh, goes into David's room. This is a much more lived in room compared to Jack's yeah, bachelor condo. Right. The difference from once it's, a month and- Yeah, once a month and the rest of the month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got posters and like musical instruments, he's got a piano, guitars, like all kinds of stuff. Like this is the room of a teenager. And, yeah. And so And Jack notices all this stuff that he never noticed about his son or probably just hasn't thought about in a long time, whatever he's been wrapped up with his own shit. But like he's got this picture, one of those little four photograph things. Like from, a photo like, booth the, thing. Yeah. Like the boardwalk where you put in a buck and it, you take four different pictures and it's him and the kid and he's like, he's wearing a, he's wearing a Dodgers cap. He's wearing an LA Dodgers cap. Like, yeah, Jack, you might be from Boston, and maybe that's where you grew up, and that's why you like the Red Sox or whatever, but, like, David lived his whole life in Los Angeles. Why wouldn't he be a Dodgers fan? <laughs> like, But speaking as a father, there's just this bitter thing. It's like, no, no, you just like who I like. Yeah, but then there's- <laughs> I the, don't care the, about the Dodgers. I don't right. care I see you once a month. 
You would like the, the, the child <laughs> doesn't want to like what the father likes. Absolutely and that's one of those correct. teenage rebellion things. Yep. And it's like, so it makes sense as to why how, did you, how did you forget he likes the Dodgers? He's wearing a fucking out. Like whatever. It, it's, it's all very, in- again, th- all this stuff is very, very interesting in context. The piano. Cause I, I at this moment I wrote down, I was like, Jack plays the piano. Like, oh we've seen, yeah. We've seen him play the piano in the past. Like forgot about that. Yeah. And again, we don't know, we don't know if this history is the same as the history, the real history, or whatever. But like, but like we've seen that in the past. There's parallels. See, here. I'm kind of I'm kind of lost on that portion of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I understand that there's probably parallel timelines, but yeah. at yeah. the same point, I just felt that this was an awful lot to explain that Jack just kind of sucks as a dad. Yeah. It's like this could have been, like you said in that one scene, it's like that could have been quicker. Right. He's just he's just not being as attentive as. Right. Uh, father needs to be or maybe even the father he'd like to be he's real it's it's he's realizing himself that right. he's not living up to a standard he does hold for himself opening up his own eyes that's good yeah. yeah so yeah he plays the machine the machine's got some messages on it he finds out that david's gonna be performing at this conservatory uh it just so happens that it's today so he like scratches it down he hears a message from himself to david about him having to go to sydney to pick up his Christian's yeah. body and he doesn't talk about it on the message he just says I miss you and I need to hear your voice and I love you and he gets a little choked up and it, it's all again contextually very very interesting and then there's one more voicemail where it's like David this is Marco from Marco's Pizza hey you never came to pick up the pizza Marco you, you, you at Marco's you still owe me pizza <laughs> then the second one beeps in Barbara it's your mother who's David <laughs> Barbara, I've called you four times. My groceries aren't going to pick themselves up. I love you. <laughs> Call me back. Smooches. Then there's the next one. Is, uh, the next message is like, beep. Hey, David, uh, it's T-Bone, man. You want to come out to the skate park? We're going to blow a fat doob. And uh, then we got, a, we, got a, we got a couple of skin books and a six pack. We're going to rip a couple of ollies. And fucking What a shred, bro. <laughs> David, this is Marco it. again. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's got to decide if he's going to go to the skate park or the conservatory. He's like, which one would my son do? Rip fat dubs and ollies with his buds or go play piano? Like was, a- <laughs> that's exactly it. It's like, oh, this is the alternate timeline. It's like, I went to the piano conservatory and watched someone else play piano because David was getting lit up at the skate park. <laughs> they cut to the conservatory. Jack's like, like watching sick. A, he's watching a kid play piano. And then Dogan's like, is that your son? He's like, no. Oh, I've never seen that kid before in my life. I honestly don't know why I'm here. <laughs> I got a weird voicemail, and I just thought I should show up. Do you know what the skate park is? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get some fat doobs. <laughs> yeah, should have went where the fat doobs were. What am I thinking? <laughs> oh god! Uh, cut back to the jungle. Hugo, Hugo <laughs> reminisces about old times. Like, man, isn't this great? This is just like back in the day when we used to wander through the jungle doing things that we didn't understand, going to places we didn't know where we were going. This is awesome. And all of our ja- friends were dying around us all the time. <laughs> Remember when we found that spooky tree in the tree, or that spooky plane in the trees? That yeah. was a good time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Remember when Locke couldn't walk and then he could? Yeah, good times. Yeah, that's good stuff. You remember that? I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> remember walking through that poison ivy? Oh, I just did it again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, what is that? Oh, it's Walt's ADHD medicine. Oh, another mystery <laughs> solved. <laughs> uh. Uh, it'd be more interesting about where's Walt? It's boner pills. <laughs> Who left their boner pills on the island? What are these? Yeah, what are these little orange pills that say <laughs> Rhino on them? <laughs> Horny goat weed from the speedway down the street. If an erection lasts for more than four hours, call more ladies. <laughs> Now I know what brought down that plane. <laughs> Just boners. Boners uh-huh. destroyed everything in the lost universe. Jack, J- Hugo asks Jack why he came to the island. Jack, of course, answers his question with a question, why'd you come back? Jacob told me to get in the cat or get in the plane, so I did. And then he's like, what's your deal? And he's like, I-, I came back because I was broken, and I was stupid enough to believe that this place could fix me. And he was like, I'm sorry. That sounds very very yeah. sad and i came back because i found the world's biggest deep fryer and i'm not letting that bitch go <laughs> yeah, and i will i'm moving in here yes <laughs> they go to the they, they arrive at the lighthouse um it's it's a uh, like a composite shot but it actually doesn't look that yeah. bad no, it's, pretty like, cool. it's pretty good it is pretty yeah cool. like i was thinking of my i was like thinking to myself i was like yeah that looks fake but not that fake like that yeah. looks pretty like decent like that's not bad it looked like the skyrim bandit towers i was expecting oh, some guys with bows and arrows yeah. to come out that slow drum beat kicks in yeah <laughs> <laughs> little red <laughs> pip comes up on the compass oh fuck <laughs> Time to do the stealth archer thing. <laughs> yep, stealth yeah, exactly. archer crouch. 
pull up my bow? Do I have enough ancient Nord arrows? Oh, I only have 500. I better stock up at the next cave. <laughs> we got to Claire's hot house. I wrote Claire's house every time because I found that I, it was a little joke for me. Um, Claire's house. Uh, Jin tells Claire about Aaron to stop her from killing Justin. He's like, don't kill Justin. They don't have your baby. Kate took your baby. And that. so it's all good. The others don't have him. Don't kill that guy. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. We'll get him back. But yeah. hey, and Claire's like, I'm a anyway, and chops him in the stomach with an axe. Yeah, I think I think he also stopped Claire on that backswing, not because he didn't want him to kill the guy, but because she was about to conk Quan. Right. Oh, yeah. she, he was like, yeah. Whoa, hold up! You're about what? to hit me with yeah. the axe. Watch idiot. the backswing there, sweet cheeks. Damn. Yeah. Look, too much follow through on that one. <laughs> uh, the shot, the shot of Claire holding the axe. She's like holding the handle, like in the middle. It's so like yeah. No one showed her I, ever. I, how nobody to holds an axe like that. No. Like it, like I was like, who this prop is weird choking up like weird. tony gwynn well she did yeah. have an absent father so you know <laughs> God, no one taught you how to wield an axe you gotta get down and closer to <laughs> nod there choke it up there kid let's go yep 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 yeah you know, we cut to the lighthouse uh the door's locked jack kicks it in and then we cut to a flash sideways um oh well, i think in that moment they're like how come we never found this before and he was like because we weren't looking for it yeah okay Okay, Magic Island. Huh? Yeah, the 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 light. You know, there's there's stuff that isn't like we revealed. Weren't that, until we weren't you... that far away. You didn't notice this tower in the distance with the burning thing. Yeah, there's also a giant foot statue. Oh. Yep, there is. Cool. Uh, it's the Statue of Liberty from Planet of the Apes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. There's a van. Uh, um, <laughs> we. <laughs> She's a fucking fan. Yeah, the door's locked. And Jack's like, did the, did the instructions say anything about the doors being jammed? No. He just kicks it in. Yeah. So we're, we're priming Jack for destruction, right? We're, yeah. we're getting yeah. him used to, like... So warming him up, yeah. Yeah. Cut to the flash sideways. Jack arrives at the conservatory to see David's audition. I wrote concert, but, like... Well, it's, it seems to be some sort of audition. Yeah. I feel like it's an open audition, which makes it a concert. Right. It was a little I, weird. We've done musical stuff. Yeah, like, but it was never open to like parents. They'd be like, no, you're... Right. You can Your try audition was just us. you and yeah. like whoever else was auditioning. Well, little right. did you know, after David was done dubbing it up at the skate park, <laughs> that he is an absolute piano servant. <laughs> and he just shreds it up. I never even played piano before today. He's like, fuck it. I just ripped a fat one at the skate park doing 900s with Tony Hawk, and now I'm just fucking ripping it on the piano. Think I'm going to start a progressive rock band <laughs> called fucking, what was the mummy? Theater? No, it was the mum, mummy beef jerky. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, speaking of band names, David in his room has a poster for Meat Coat, which is Fuck the yeah, ba- that's crazy. <laughs> that's the band that Drive Shaft would have opened for if Charlie would have managed to get his brother to come with him and get back in the studio and put the band back together. They were is gonna- that real? Yeah, I thought that was in the trivia. We need to get Kevin higher on Meat Coat. See see what he knows about him. <laughs> Yeah. What do you know? Just know, but no context. I want you to go up to Kevin Hire and go, what do you know about meat coat? Okay, we're going to text him immediately <laughs> after this. All three of us at yeah. the same time text Kevin, I, what do you no, know about meat coat? Fuck that. Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. <laughs> Live on Kevin, air. Hold on. Yep. Kevin Hoyas. All right. What do you Wait, wait hold on. What do know you know about, about meat coat? I'm, put, yeah. I'm putting meat coat in all caps. Yeah, okay, right, me too, yeah. same. All right, stand by. He's going to have a fever dream, I think, after this. All right, wait, hold on now. Meat coat with an exclamation and a question mark, right? Exclamation, question, and question mark. Question mark, okay, yep. ready? Hold on, JP, are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. three. <laughs> Got him. Standing. All right, so we've simultaneously texted Kevin Heyer. We will check in. I also texted my mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 when she gives me the full history of the band Meat Coat. Yeah, not the weirdest thing you've texted your mom today. <laughs> so we're at the, the open audition, whatever thing. Jack goes in, the kid's playing the thing for a, a, like a panel of judges. And, and so like... Killing it. Yeah, he, he's doing pretty good. And so like I wrote a little sidebar here to myself because... Uh, J, um, actually, before I, I talk about this, JP, did you have... like I, I know you're, you're only absorbing the show for the first time ever. Freddie, you've only seen one other episode. Right. Yeah. Like, how were you feeling at this point? What were you What were you thinking in in terms uh, of uh, like about Jack. the relationship between Jack and David? I guess I I was so this episode gave me a lot of whiplash because the other time we saw him chumming around with his son, they are so fucking buddy buddy, and 
I was Could like, that have been prior to like the divorce or something? No, it would have been. Like, I think after this episode. So it's maybe, a, yeah, it's after oh, this. They like go to the will so reading like together. A and and yeah, sort of. and it's like they're so fucking chummy. And I was like, what? Like is this some Ghost of Christmas Future shit? Right that, now? Yeah, I don't like, know. I, I just, I mean, but I don't know. Is that is that kind of what you were referring to, Adam? Or like the thing I wrote, I wrote down here. This is where I wrote down that to myself. Doesn't Jack play the piano? And then he has this conversation with Dogan about the pressure that we, that we put on these kids yeah. and, and all that stuff. And and it. I realized that I realized to myself and I can understand why neither one of you have come to this realization because Freddie, you have no fucking idea what's happening with the flash right. sideways. <laughs> I was just about to and, say, is Jack seeing his eyes right now? If this is an alternate future, is he seeing like himself through his father's eyes? Oh, because of the flash sideways is not a representation of reality, but it is a, it is a metaphysical representation of the survivors lives. It only just dawned on me watching this, that the, that in real life, Jack doesn't have a son. Oh, okay. Here in the Flash Sideways, David is here. David is not Jack's son. David is Jack's unhealed inner child. Oh, uh. see that? Okay. That kind of makes sense he, to what th- we were. Yeah. David, everything about David is exactly what Jack was like as a child. Exactly. And that makes sense if this is a metaphysical look and not an actual historical uh. timeline. He's reliving his trauma through his father's eyes almost. Yeah. Like, like the, he's seeing it through what he did. And this medical physical plane is allowing him the opportunity to heal that trauma, to right. heal his inner child and to become a better person right because here yuki is in this scene like how you said before like oh is this your son like that that sort yeah. of thing like we we come across him and i was kind of scratching my head going wait a minute dude. yeah he made yeah. it off the island too and that's what i was thinking too is i was like wait wait was this one of the people who made it off the island and now they're in a mercenary crew back to the island to claim the giant deep fryer yeah. <laughs> no, that's the that's the central focus of this. It's it not the lighthouse. It is the giant temple deep fryer. It it only just dawned on me here watching this scene for again, like I've seen the show before, whatever. But yeah, I was like, oh my god, that's why David's here. That's cool. Um, Good call. Uh, but then yeah, he bumps into Dogen and he's like, oh, is that your son? Yeah, that's my son. It's like, oh, you know, they shouldn't have all this pressure getting into this academy. Must be pretty prestigious and hard to get into. And blah that's blah. That's what blah. fucking should... losers say. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> it, it, it's wild because he's like, how long has he been playing? Shaq's like, I I know. Um, Idea. I'm so <laughs> you fucking play drunk piano? Right now. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait a minute, who are you? How did I get here? <laughs> Had a little bit of Kessler's over ice on the way over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I got a question for you. Do you know where the skate park is? <laughs> <laughs> From the flash side, we cut back to the lighthouse. They get up to the top. There's this big ancient <laughs> device me- mechanism here. Um, they get up to the top, and there's this yeah, this mirror thing with this gear and a chain, and it's got uh, degrees. And so, like part of the last legible part of Hurley's instructions on his forum just says 108 degrees, and he's like, "We got to turn it to 108, and that lo- and that'll be that's that'll get Jacob here." Uh, I'm pro- I promise. <laughs> yeah. And then Shepard, that pretentious prick, sees his own fucking name. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah all going to me. Every degree has got a. You were not doing what you said earlier. Associated with it. Yeah, there's a bunch of scratched out names on each degree, so there's apparently 360 names, 360 be- different right. people that you can peep on. Yeah, Jack wants to see his own number. He's like, "Fuck all that 108 shit. Let's go to 23. That's where <laughs> that's where I'm at." He wants to see that because two reasons: he sees his own name, and he sees as the mirrors are rotating, he's seeing things in the mirrors, and so he's like, "Did you see that?" And then when Hurley looks, he's like it's just ocean. They keep going, they keep crank, and they crank. So he takes the thing, cranks it over to his place, and then we see Margot's house in Brentwood. And he's like, that's my childhood home. That's where I grew up, or whatever. Uh, how did he... Okay, so if he grew up... If he was a child there, why is he... A, I don't understand why he's a Red Sox fan. He's not from Boston. <laughs> maybe he's the rebellious kid, remember? We brought that up. Like, if David's not real, then maybe maybe Jack was like, oh, my, yeah, dad, like my Cro- dad likes the Red Sox. Fuck the Red yeah. Sox. I'm going to like but the Cro- Dodgers. Yeah. So, like, real Jack, he did anything that he could to try and suck up to his dad. And Christian was a Red Sox fan. So, like, Jack became a. Re- Instead of rebe- Jack in the real timeline, right. the Jack that we're watching here in the lighthouse, he never rebelled against his father because he was so desperate for his approval. There you go. And that's why he's a Red Sox fan. Whereas David started to bleed blue, and we- that makes way more sense. <laughs> the only note that I had for this scene was if. They would have used mill radians rather than degrees. He would have had a lot more names. Get out, nerd. Yeah, that, that's a really that's a really good point, that, JP. That joke is only for Ying, Nick Slayton, and Haas. Uh, anywho, it would have been about sixty four hundred names. Uh, 
Jack gets mad. He's like, where's Jacob? <laughs> Hurley's like, he's not here. I lied. He's not coming. Like, whatever. And Jack's like, I need to know why he's been watching me my whole life. And if he doesn't show up in the next half a second, I'm going to smash every mirror in here with the telescope. Time's up. Smash, smash, smash. <laughs> Can I say what my last my last note of this episode was? So many years bad luck. Yeah. 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 We cut back to Flash Sideways. Uh, David comes out and Jack's like, Hey, uh, you had me really scared, but like I saw, I see you now. I see now why you weren't telling me all this stuff because you're yeah. afraid of disappointing me. And, and, and I, I, I need to tell you something that my father never told me. You can never disappoint me. I will always be proud of you. And he does, he does in this moment the thing that a good dad should. Absolutely. And he realizes he pulls, his, he, he has this sort of head out of ass pulling moment in which he pulls his own head out of his ass and realizes that he's been absent and gets present. I don't know, man. That kid didn't have pegs on that bike. I'd be pretty fucking disappointed. My kid yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> no <laughs> friends. <laughs> but yeah, they patch things up. And so like now we, we see like David's like, I am so happy for you to say that to me. He's like, hey, I got some pizza back at the house. Are you hungry? It's stone cold at this point. I've been driving around Los Angeles looking for you for hours. Yeah, yeah. this is already tomorrow. This is tomorrow <laughs> night. Yeah. That's yeah. how long it actually took. You know, the late night clandestine conservatory auditions. <laughs> yeah. We got back to the lighthouse, the cliff. Jack is sitting on the contemplation cliff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a good way to call <laughs> it. Contemplating the ocean. <laughs> Just looking at stuff. The longing ledge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's like good. That. The longing ledge. Uh, he goes standing by the lighthouse still, and, and Jacob rocks up to him, and he explains to him the whole thing. He's like, hey, some <laughs> people can be told instructions and follow them. Some people have to be tricked into it. That's why I can tell you, because you're a trusting individual. Jack is too headstrong to be just told. He'll always fight back, so you have to trick him into doing things. It's okay. Like He passes. The, he, he tells Hurley this thing without like passing judgment on him. It's not like, you're a sheep, Hugo. It's just like you are trusting. You have this whatever belief or faith that exists. He Jack sees doesn't. In him. Yeah. Jack never has had this. The whole time that he was explaining to Hugo about how why he had to trick Jack and why he would just believe just reminded me why I don't go to church anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I, it it makes because this whole scene, I was like, if you just needed the lighthouse to be broken, like you could have just asked her lady to do it. Is it's that, like, yeah, it we, was that end game. He needed it to be. Well, I I don't no, know if the, that was actually the, necessary or not, but like the real end game is that he needed to get Hugh and Jack away from the temple. Oh yeah, yeah that's this next part. I'm yeah, sorry, that's I the, forgot that's about the that. real end game. But like, apparently, it, there were all like it's killing six or seven birds with one stone. I guess yeah, or one lighthouse. I don't know. But like, I. I feel like Jack earlier telling Hugo about like them going to the cave and being like, hey, this is where I followed my dead dad and found the fucking coffin and the water and all that stuff. Like, and then breaking the the mirror. Like, it's all this like, I'm, igno- I'm finally acknowledging all of this insanity and I'm also really fucking over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm I'm totally broken now. So let's let's rebuild. He, at this point, also says that somebody's heading to the temple, that the people in the temple are in danger. Like, you could have led with that. Yeah. Yeah. Hugo wants to warn him. Jacob says it's too late. Damn. Bummer. Because you know who's still at the fucking temple? Miles. I was going to say my giant deep fryer. Yeah. The deep fryer. (laughs) A bunch of awesome shit. (laughs) Dude, the tic-tac-toe game? Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? That we just made <laughs> with all the vines. That shit. That's what he really said. He's like, I just fucking made it. My Tahitian we tree. St- my Tahitian we took- tree officer, no. <laughs> we took all these vines and, and leaves out of this pile that they had labeled bandages and made a sweet <laughs> tic tac toe game. Like, we used all of our medical supplies. And now you're just going to let that all go to waste? <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, Claire and Jen are having a little chat. And yep. uh, she's like, hey. He's trying to survive. That is not a chat. Yeah. He's trying sure. to get out of this alive with yeah. a mangled leg. Well, yeah. And she's like, why'd you, why'd you say, hey, hey, friend, why'd you say the fucking K had my baby? Why did you lie? And he's like, ah, oh, I was just, I was just playing. I was good. I just, you know, I didn't joking. want you to kill him. I just didn't want. What? I didn't want. She's like, oh, so, so they have my baby. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. It, yep. Totally. It's at the time. I saw, I saw Aaron. I oh, saw your baby. There's a quick, there's a quick moment right at the end of the last thing where Jacob says somebody bad is heading to the temple. And so then when we cut to the scene, the audience is being, it was like sort of fed like, ooh, Claire's the bad thing. Yeah. I was about yeah, to say, yeah. is Claire that bad? Is yeah. Claire going to just murk right. the yeah, whole yeah, temple? Yeah. So 
Jin is like, yeah, I'll, we should go to the temple. I'll take you there. It, it, there's a secret passage. It's all that. It's all. It's all cool. And then, she, uh, so uh, her friend arrives. <laughs> Your friend, my friend, everybody's friend. Sweet baby boy, evil lock. John <laughs> is he the new man in black? Uh, yeah. Does he have yep. the power of the smoke monster? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have the power yeah. of the smoke You've monster. You've watched two episodes of the show and you deduce that. I have very structured <laughs> mental issues. You have that I autism. Can, yeah, I was about to say that's what I was getting at. That's my wife. You can ask her. I'm like, no movie can fool me. No show can fool me. I will guess the ending within the first like 10 minutes. And she goes, fuck you. Do that all the time. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I just count it up to bad writing. I'm like, if I can write it, if I figured this out, or if I'm so, like, such a, a narcissist, I'm like, that's how I would have written it, so that's how I guessed it. <laughs> I'm like, I've never written a thing in my life. I mean, but you've watched enough stuff. No, like, you know what I mean. It's like, know. I'm, but I'm sitting there acting like I did this, this script treaty myself. <laughs> the man in black is back, baby, and he is Claire's very dear friend. <laughs> yeah. One kidney uh, less. Yeah, <laughs> but really fucking angry. Lost. Uh, that's the that is the lighthouse, y'all. Yeah. The real question: Did we like it? Was it good? That's what we're here to answer, Freddie. I honestly, I liked. The, so now, only being the second episode that I watched, and having Adam explain some of that, the the parallel side of things, I appreciate the episode more. I would have liked more of just the island stuff, and it left me wanting to see the next episode. So sure. I will say it was a good episode. It All wasn't right. as, like, there. I think my first episode on the podcast was an early episode. Yeah. So you yeah. can tell just, like, some of the polish that's come through either just, totally. you know, production-wise production. yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. even a little bit more polish in the writing or just, you know, the character Characters have settled, or the actors have settled into their characters, and yeah, they're much more natural sure. within them. So, yeah, much more enjoyable, not as much to laugh at in a bad way, which is a good thing. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Giant Temple Deep Fryer, <laughs> A plus, ten of ten would watch again. <laughs> <laughs> nice uh jp what do you think uh i'll give it a meh i was pretty like i like the claire stuff the the lighthouse stuff was interesting the the flash sideways i was kind of like eh wasn't wasn't really tripping my trigger but i sure. I, would, I didn't hate it but i wasn't there, there's season two podcast episodes i've liked better so i'll give it a i'll give sure. it a, a solid meh all right cool adam i think on the whole i enjoyed it and again the revelation to me personally and and if you already figured this out out there in lost on lost land you're much smarter than me congratulations go fuck yourselves <laughs> the red the red the revelation that david is jack's Alana has, sc- has been screaming for the last 45 minutes <laughs> i don't even care um, <laughs> the revelation to me personally that david was jack's inner child there is jack's unhealed inner child th- that uh, that meant a lot to me uh, and i don't again i don't think you get that in the the original watch too because you don't again the metaphysicalness of the flash sideways hasn't been revealed to the sure maybe the, maybe okay. the smart viewer in 2010 already sussed it out but like i didn't when i was watching this i was just like why does he have a kid what the fuck <laughs> so that so that final revelation of jack being able to connect with his inner child connected with the fuzzy memories about his appendix scar and like how the or how flash sideways jack there's something about his brain that's not connecting with what's being presented to him sure and so it's that waking up feeling trying to punch through but he hasn't had the trigger that some of the other characters have had yet. Yeah. Again, because this is very early in season six, most characters haven't woken up yet. He, it's almost like he's trying to do it on his own and he can't. But I liked that a lot. I liked the Claire stuff, the Claire Jin, see the the hot stuff. That was cool. I liked that. That was creepy and awesome. Yeah. And then there were other parts of the thing where, again, it just suffers from that thing of moving characters around. It's like, okay, they were at the temple, they got to the lighthouse, so now we got to have half of the episodes about them walking. Okay, cool. I, I didn't need the, them stopping into the caves with the asthma and the skeletons and the coffin i don't care like there was parts of this that i was like zoned out i was just like fast forward so i think my final my final uh verdict on this is i'd probably give it an a minus the like the the inner child thing was so huge for me personally that it outweighed the lamer stuff about the episode so yeah probably like an a minus pretty like pretty good on the whole i think okay i appreciate that that's art is such a subjective thing you know it's what you gain from it so the yeah. ability for you to gain that depth from it is important that's a good call cool good stuff okay next on the list yeah let's hand out some awards shall we 
the lost MVP. Who gets the gold star? Who's pulling their weight? Who is our favorite? If you got to just pick one person to be uh, getting that gold medal up on the podium. Freddie, who is going to be your lost MVP? For the episode? Yeah. I'm going to say Hurley just because yeah. the guy is... Again, he's the definition of no enemies. He's like the one normalcy in the thing, and I, I don't know. I can never say anything bad about him. But I will give a MVP runner-up to Jin for surviving. Sure. Because sure. if you watch the episode, you're like, dude, you're teetering at any second. That axe was going to be turned. Yeah. And he was using every yeah. bit of survival instinct, and I think that might be survival MVP for me. Okay. That. I like yeah. that. I like that. Yep. Adam, MVP. Jack. Yeah. Okay. Flash sideways, Jack. Yeah. Island Jack didn't do a ton. I mean, smashing up the lighthouse was dope. I like that. That's cool. But Flash Sideways Jack was doing a lot of heavy lifting here. Yeah. JP, what about you? I never thought I'd say it, but here we are. Oh, boy. I'm giving it to Claire. Hell yeah. Well, it took it took four years for us to get here, but uh, Claire. I'll give it to Claire. You know, Claire suddenly become in- became interested, even though she's still doing the same thing that she's always doing. Where's my baby? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to find you, baby. I'm gonna, yeah, she's doing the... Her best Casey Affleck, Affleck. I'm going to yeah, find I'm you, gonna baby. I'm going to find you, baby. Um, <laughs> but, man, now she's got some drive. Now she's like, yeah. well, I'm not just going to sit here at camp and wait for someone else to find my baby. I'm going to pick up this axe, and I'm going to start killing some I was about to say, she's people. got an M1 carbine yeah. and an axe. She's good. I, I'm into it, man. I like Crazy Claire. She's great. Yeah. It's very, very dope. And she's so cute. <laughs> every <laughs> every axe swing is, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I hit you with an axe. Arcs. Arcs. <laughs> nice. I like it. Uh, Claire, flashlight is Jack Hurley. Honorable mention, Jin. Very good. Nice little rainbow of MVPs. Yeah. Kick, kicking some butt here. Other side of the coin, the lost forever. King suck of shit mountain out here fucking up, just hacking their way through the lighthouse. Freddy, kick it oh, off. Who's your that. lost forever? <laughs> Substitute baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> For being the creepiest oh nightmare God. demon that's ever lived. <laughs> Like being the fucking tulpa that Claire feeds for her hallucinations and delusions. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, Adam, you're lost forever, and why is it Kate? <laughs> <laughs> it should be Kate. Uh, no, I'm actually gonna give it to Jacob. Really? Um, he, yeah, because like they're at the end. He, that is a representation of everything that is annoying about trying to be a person of faith. It's like I understand that faith is like. You got. You have to take things on faith. You can't just have stuff handed to you and blah 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 blah. But it also sounds like incredibly like annoying. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you want something done, you're some sort of omnipotent, semi all powerful being in an everlasting war with your brother who is a representation of evil and greed. Um, pull some of your own fucking weight around here, <laughs> like. Break your own sidelines coaching, bro. Yeah. A little ridiculous. Maybe if you explained to Jack that you were like some sort of demigod, he'd listen to that. I don't know. <laughs> um, honorable mention to Kate. Yeah, just because she does look like she stinks um, in this episode. So yeah. take, take a shower. I mean, we yeah. could always say Margot kind of sucks, too, because she's just a oh, drunk guy. Oh. Uh, second that honorable was gonna be, That was going to be like my besides substitute baby and. Just I wanted to say substitute babies. But uh, Marco's yeah. Marco's a close we second did, just because he's a drunk piece of shit. Yeah. And we didn't really touch on it, but like the will was just on the bookshelf. Yeah, right. What a lazy bitch. I looked everywhere. <laughs> no, you fucking didn't. We yeah, we looked, looked everywhere looked except this, for the most obvious place. I I looked under this box of unopened vodka that's open. <laughs> you gotta drink it all, otherwise it, it goes bad. That's what my it, mother told me. Exactly. <laughs> it could have been in this bottle. It doesn't matter, I can see through it. It's gotta put his will in there. Margo, dry out. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm changing. Rush. I'm changing my answer. Margo. Yeah. Margo right. Good call. Is, Good call. Margo's lost forever. Honorable mentions to Kate, and then second honorable mention to Jacob. Right. <laughs> oh, Jacob yeah. became less annoying. Kate still smells. Margo's drunk as hell. <laughs> uh, can I change my lost MVP to Margo for being drunk as hell? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say it's a dual award. <laughs> You somehow you're the lost forever and MVP. I accept. Uh, I, it's happened before. I was about to say I am the ultimate. Yeah. I am the best and the worst. I am the alpha and omega of yep. lost. It's happened. It's fucking Margo. JP, who's your lost forever? Uh, it's Kate. Kate. Yeah, Kate. Just get out of here. Go it was away. very weird to have her in there for literally like uh, yeah. 15 seconds. I mean, is she. You know what's awesome for, on a side note, like Evangeline Lily, anytime that episode happens, it's like royalty. Yeah. You yeah. get your 10-second check right there, yeah. dude. Yeah. I just, I, 
exhausted. It, it, for, it was it was pointless. Yeah. It, you could have put that line into the next episode that she's in. Right. And just, it was. It, it yeah. really was unnecessary. Because I think the only thing it really set it up was that maybe she was. Well, she wasn't even going back to the temple, right? No. Yeah, so it's not setting up that like all oh, the people that are attacking and Kate's going to be there. It was like literally no reason to she have. Said, her. I'm going to go find Claire. Cool. You Gold. said that last time we saw you. And Claire's going to yeah, go we in. Already, yeah, we already know she wants to find Claire. That's why she came back to the island. We saw that in the episode when they came back to the island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, where's my baby? Um, I left it in the... Uh, oh, what? Uh, I didn't bring him with me because I knew that we had to crash a plane to get here. Yeah, so man. I thought it would be safer to come get you and not bring the baby to you. <laughs> why don't yeah. you just bring substitute baby home? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have baby? We have baby at home. He's enrolled. <laughs> We're enrolling him in kindergarten this year oh, he's in a Montessori <laughs> school <laughs> I don't understand why he doesn't have any friends he's an eldritch whore um, <laughs> he's an, he's an eldritch an neighborhood demon. kids are trying to smoke weed out of his skull <laughs> <laughs> they turned him into a bong <laughs> they turned my poor baby into a bong well at least he's getting out of the house yeah. fuck yeah <laughs> At least he's not playing piano like a fucking nerd. Yeah, hey nerd. guys, wanna, you want to go get ripped on Substitute Baby? <laughs> At the skate park? <laughs> At the skate park, we're going to go use Substitute Baby as a pipe. Oh, man. oh, man, we're out of Panama Red, we're out of Acapulco Gold, <laughs> but we got a little Substitute <laughs> Baby left. You want to okay, get maybe, real weird maybe with Maybe we it. could start our band and call it Substitute Baby. It's a three-piece. Uh, substitute Baby three piece. opening for Meat Coat this <laughs> yes, year. Yes. <laughs> a progressive rock band, Substitute Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring oh. David Shepard on the keys yeah. man. Da, 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 da. With his with his band with his opening act, David. Yeah, David and the mummy beef jerkies. <laughs> beef jerky. What? what has happened to this podcast? It's called jazz, sweetheart. <laughs> it's all about the notes you don't play. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go home and make our substitute baby band logo in a notebook with pencil. We're in high school. Uh, I, I, put, I gotta get my quote book out. It's called Jazz Sweetheart. <laughs> it's called Jazz Sweetheart. Oh god! Then the S in substitute baby is a stussy. Yep, you yes. know it. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Uh, god. Uh, oh my god. <sighs> <sighs> Freddie. <laughs> Thanks for coming. You're, you're yeah. welcome. Oh, Thanks for having me. I'd like to do another one soon. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, is there anything you want to plug? <laughs> Fucking our new band, Substitute Baby. Yeah. <laughs> First yeah. album, it's Nerf or Nothing. Yeah. Oh, we'll be we'll be at the Pfizer Forum. Yeah, yeah. dude. We're gonna be opening before the Bucks play. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be the, the opening before then, the band game before the basketball game it's gonna be substitute baby baby and then we will be shortly chased out of the yeah. Pfizer for you're by not you're not police. allowed to be here <laughs> we already told you oh my God. get out of here you buskers <laughs> that's what they are street musicians are buskers but you're the only person that knows that <sighs> um God. adam uh, <laughs> what are we watching next time? That's a oh, that that's an excellent question. Let's take a look here. I'm having a little bit of trouble reading the spreadsheet because I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> you should be like, hey man, how you feeling? Substitute baby, yeah, substitute baby all day. <laughs> I feel like that you thing are... looks. <laughs> if you want to be lost with us, be sure to come back in a couple of weeks. We will be watching season six. Episodes one and two. Oh shit! L A X centric characters various. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the season six premiere. This is the episode that introduces the Flash sideways. Yeah, and we're gonna have two brand new guests on the show. <laughs> Uh, really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Some former comedians of the Backlog Comedy House, Bridget and Cullen Dunn, are going to be on, and it's going to get fucking weird. It's going to be real weird. <laughs> I'm very excited for this episode. It's going to be great. To it a lot. It's going to be great. Uh, well, Freddie. I thank you, boys. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's a blast. It's a pleasure. Thank you for these awesome listeners for tolerating my awful, awful voice. And, yeah, <laughs> the so, dulcet so tones in the comments of nails on the chalkboard. How hot Freddie's voice is. Oh, God. Jesus, so, uh... don't. <laughs> refrain. <laughs> refrain from that torture. Yes. But <laughs> uh, uh, in all seriousness, thank you, everyone out there, for tuning in to this episode of Lost on Lost. We love you. I'm Adam. I'm JP. I'm free. Do you have any, any <laughs> Whether you like it or not. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, go do it again. <laughs> nope. No, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Lost on Lost is produced and edited by me and JP. We wish to acknowledge that we live, work, and produce our show on occupied land. Burbank, California is located on the traditional tribal lands of the Tongva, Chumash, Keech, and Fernandeño Tataviam peoples. Milwaukee, Wisconsin is located on the traditional tribal lands of the Peoria, Potawatomi, Miyama, and Ho-Chunk peoples. And Lost was produced in Hawaii on the lands of the Kanaka Maoli. Visit native-land.ca to learn more about the land you live and work on. You can engage with us on IG, Facebook, and Twitter at Lost on Lost One. You can also email us at wearelostonlost at gmail.com or support us with dollar monies at coffee.com slash wearelostonlost. Thanks to Lostpedia and its community of contributors, Danny Schmitz, Random.org, and as always, you the listeners for tuning in. We're hosted at Podbean. You can hear us there or wherever you get your podcasts, except MySpace. We're we're not on MySpace. Yet. Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs>